hi in this video let's have image based discussion starting with one specific question from dental anatomy so as you can see we have primary teeth so you can make out and differentiate primary teeth from that of permanent teeth based on the morphologic features so clearly you can see that the roots are narrow and they are diverging and also the crown is constricting more comparatively the cervical portion so this is an image of primary right molars buccal aspect where you can see maxillary first molar that is a maxillary second molar that is b mandibular first molar c and mandibular second molar d and now you can see the lingual aspect of primary right molars right so you can make this out based on the number of roots usually in case of maxillary molar you have a single palatal root and then you have two buccal roots mesobuccal and distobuccal and this is a mesial view so primary right molars mesial aspect right now let's move on to the next question next image based question from periodontics so uh, i guess there was a question asking you to identify the normal structures of periodontium in the longitudinal section so as you can see we have gingival sulcus free or marginal gingiva marginal groove attached gingiva and also we have sulcular or clavicular epithelium junctional epithelium etc so the best thing you can do to master these image based questions is when you are going through mountains and mountains of theory just take a break go through the textbook go through all the images and the legends which are given beneath each image so it will be a, a different mode of preparation and also the purpose will be served right so just try this pattern whenever you are preparing any particular topic or subject rather than just restricting yourself to a particular course also make sure that you are reviewing the literature given in standard textbooks especially the images along with the information given beneath each image now let's move on to the next question from oral medicine a clinical based question was asked so as you can see it is kaposi's sarcoma so kaposi's sarcoma oral involvement in this form of disease is quite unusual but when it occurs it does so as soft bluish nodules of palatal mucosa or gingiva and also as you know kaposi's sarcoma is a multicentric proliferation of vascular and spindle cell components which was first described by a hungarian dermatologist kaposi way back in 1872 right so this tumor is currently incremented with hiv or aids and its clinical status depends greatly on the immune status of the patient all the found predominantly in hiv infected persons hiv does not seem to be the direct cause of tumorous proliferation and hiv amino acid sequences have not been identified within lesional cells consider this information very important now let's move on to the next question from oral surgery regarding flaps so as you can see it's a flap designed for papillary preservation flap so flap designed for a papillary preservation flap as you can see a incisions for this type of flap are depicted by interrupted lines and the preserved papilla can be incorporated either into the facial or the lingual palatal flap b you can see the reflected flap exposing the underlying bone and also several osseous defects are evident especially in the proximal aspect and c flap returned to its original position covering the entire interdental spaces so this design is for papillary preservation flap now let's move on to the next question from implantology so the image which you find now it's a wrench dental implant ratchet and torque wrench so pre calibrated torque wrenches are used in implantology to accurately set the tightening force to the abutment screw you need any additional information pertaining to this i'll share the link in the description part of the video check it out right now let's move on to the next question from orthodontics right so as you can see this is a functional regulator fr3 so functional Character of functional regulator is, as you know, a myofunctional appliance developed by Professor Frankel of Germany. So this appliance is also called as Frankel appliance, vestibular appliance, and oral gymnastic appliance. So as you can see in FR3, you can find lip pads. We have two upper lip pads, and also there are buccal shields, labial support wires which connect the lip pads together, and to the buccal shields, and also we have palatal bow. right now next question from occlusion so as you can see we have different types of occlusion so in case of class 1 mal occlusion as you know the meso buccal cusp of upper first molar coincides with the buccal groove of lower first molar right 
next another equation from anatomy so as you can see it's a sigmoid notch or mandibular notch so the upper border of ramus is thin and it has or it is bounded anteriorly by carnoid process and posteriorly by condylar process and this area between the coronoid and condylar process there is a deep concavity which is called as mandibular notch or sigmoid notch now let's move on to the penultimate topic orthodontics first order second order and third order which we already discussed so as you can see the illustration depicts first order second order and third order bends so second order bends in maxillary incisor segment are given to compensate for the inclination of incisal edges of these teeth related to long axis of the tooth right i guess second order bend was asked in your exam now let's move on to the next final question from anatomy or a surgery general surgery so uh, you can categorize it based on your convenience so once you perform thyroidectomy once you remove complete thyroid gland as you can see the structure that's visible is trachea right so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight in this specific video so if you need any additional information do let me know i'll update that accordingly in the description part of the video and also you have additional keywords or topics drop them in the comments below we'll review them and we'll get back with more videos soon right so wish you all the best love you all